everyone. Welcome to the Monday, October 3rd meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. My name is Ellie Bueller. I have the privilege of serving uh, as chair of the commission. And I'm joined this morning by Commissioner Kevin Cook and Commissioner Bob Archer. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Madam Clerk, the first item, please. First item is item three, consent agenda. There's just three items on the consent agenda. Any questions? I would move for approval of the consent agenda as presented. So motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item four, new business, A County <coughs> Clerk number one, consider all voucher payments. Uh, Madam Chair, this morning we have one voucher report dated September 30th, 2016. Total amount of vouchers, one million three hundred eighty-five thousand four hundred thirty-two dollars and ninety-four cents. Uh, significant items uh, on the vouchers include allocations to AMR of 152,000, health insurance premiums of 110,000, uh, uh, health department new building expenses of 109,000, <coughs> and then sales tax money to JADO of 642,000. I've reviewed the vouchers and I'll make a motion to approve as presented. There's a motion to approve. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item A2, consider correction orders. I'll move approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item B, planning number one, public hearing and consider approval of resolution number 2016-66, authorizing a conditional use permit for property located at 5523 Northwest 25th Street in Monokan Township for establishing a storage and retail sales facility for seed crop protection and other related products used for agricultural production. Good morning, Commissioners. Barry Beagle, Shawn County Planning Department. Uh, what is before you is a conditional use permit request. Uh, Initiated by Stephen and Shauna Perotsky, owners of property of a three acre tract of land at 5523 Northwest 25th Street. And uh, they are initiating the application on behalf of JB Pearl Sales and Service that wishes to acquire the property to run an agri agronomic service business from the property. This request did appear for public hearing on September 12th and was unanimously recommended for approval by a vote of four to zero. Planning Commission ultimately, despite three individuals uh, appearing to express concern of, or uh, issues with regard to the proposal. The Planning Commission felt satisfied with the responses of the applicant plus the safety measures as required by KDA with regard to the products and materials that uh, the applicant will use that uh, this would be a viable use of the property and consistent with the agricultural character of the area in which it sits. So with that, I will conclude my comments. Thank you, Barry. Are there questions for Barry at this time? I'm sure. Commissioner Cook. Uh, Mr. Beagle, recently we had a request for zoning change for an engineering firm, and this was in rural Shawnee County mm -hmm. in the uh, Tecumseh area, mm -hmm. and the commission ultimately denied that request when it was changing the zoning, um, given it's in the agricultural area, it's outside of the city, it's outside of the county, not an urban area. How does this differ from that? Two things. Uh, one is, is that in that particular occasion, they were actually seeking to rezone the property from agriculture to a, a office business type of use. So it's an, it was an actual change of classification of the property. In this particular case, the zoning of the property still remains the same of our R1 residential reserve district, but with the conditional use permit, it's just adding one additional use, and that is an agricultural support business with respect to the property. So the the primary zoning of this property still remains the same, whereas in the other case, we're actually changing the zoning of the property. Second, um, agricultural support businesses are recognized within the RR1 and the RA1 districts, the two districts common to the unincorporated area. They both recognize agricultural support businesses as a legitimate use and activity within it, but subject to a conditional use permit. So you, you still have to go through a public hearing process to verify that the use as it is proposed in the location that it is proposed is consistent and compatible with its setting. And, and that's the process that we went through here. But agricultural support businesses are allowed within the district, whereas in the other one, they were actually changing the classification of the property out of that district to a, a business use. Thank you, Barry. Commissioner Cook, would you like to come up, please? Excuse me. Do we have to open a public hearing? Go ahead and say it just a little bit. Do we have to open a public hearing for this? 
I would move to open the public hearing. There's a motion by Commissioner Cook to Sorry. open the public hearing. Second, Second by Commissioner Archer. Now the public, all those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. So the public hearing is officially open. So we've heard Barry's comments. Any mm -hmm. further no. questions? Um, at this time, I'll, uh, anyone who is in favor, um, please come to the podium. Just uh, state your name and your comments. Good morning and thank you. Uh, my name is Doyle Pearl. I'm president and CEO of uh, GB Pearl Sales and Service. Um, our company's been in business for about 55 years. We uh, were located in St. Mary's, and about 15 years ago, we expanded to the Perry uh, Lawrence location. And what we're um, seeking uh, as a proposal here is to put a central office in that would support um, precision ag uh, specialists and uh, sales agronomy specialists out of this location for the eastern and western division of our company. Uh, we've outgrown our office space in, in both of the other locations. The difference with this site would be that it is not going to be a large footprint like our other two locations. It'll be uh, strictly an office, a warehouse, and, and some storage of, of product. We do not uh, plan, uh, and there's not enough room there for a uh, mixing facility and, and a full uh, service uh, company like you might see at our other two locations. Um, the footprint, uh, we're, we're not going to change the outside of, uh, of the buildings. The uh, residents will make a, a good four, uh, four office building for us. Uh, no plans on changing the appearance of that. The green space that's there now is going to stay there. And uh, so, in, in our opinion, it will be a fairly low impact as far as the uh, outside view. Um, most of our uh, sales calls are at the farm, although we do anticipate some, some uh, uh, visits and, and um, travel in, into the location that it won't be very heavy. Um, we are asking for anhydrous ammonia, which is a seasonal uh, business that would be uh, a few weeks, about three weeks in the spring and two to three weeks in the fall. Uh, there again, uh, the volume would be a little lower. The central location. Some of our customers have asked us for that, and we'd like to uh, try to satisfy those needs. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Um, traffic will basically come off at the Minokan improvements and off of 24. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's that's the normal flow, and that's what we'll certainly uh, promote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank Anyone you. else? Anyone opposed? Making comments today? Okay. Commissioners? Yes. I'll move to close the public hearing and adopt the resolution. It's a motion by Commissioner Archer. Second. A second by Commissioner Cook. All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries 3 to 0. Thank you. Item C, Treasurer number 1, consider authorization and execution of contract C277 2016 with Mail Services LLC to print and mail tax statements for the Treasurer's Office from the County's General Fund. Good morning, Commissioners. Larry Ma, Shawnee County Treasurer. Um, you have before you a contract with Mail Services to outsource the printing of the first and second half tax statements for this coming year. Um, it has the potential to save us between two and ten thousand uh, dollars. I want to make particular note that I did not make the decision uh, to select this mail services based on an RFP process uh, because I don't think that uh, there's enough savings to justify the risk of changing what has been very successful for us over the years and that is to have our in-house IT folks uh, print these. Uh, rather, I made the decision based on uh, other factors. Uh, the Going to the outsource uh, gives me the potential to consolidate uh, mail that goes to multiple addresses. In other words, uh, if you have multiple uh, properties, we send uh, multiple envelopes, and 80% of the cost is, uh, is the cost of postage. So we have potential to uh, save the cost of the postage, uh, but we also have the potential to uh, satisfy a, uh, 
a question I get from a lot of taxpayers, and that is, why do I get multiple envelopes? So we can we can do that. It also has uh, the benefit of reducing a uh, failure because of a single point of uh, failure. When we do it in-house, we have one or two printers that are required to uh, print around 121,000 uh, statements in a one or two day period. That printer happens to fail, then that completely stops the process and has the potential to delay our uh, uh, mailing. By going to a, a company that that's all they do day in and day out, uh, I eliminate that potential. Uh, I made the selection of this particular uh, vendor because uh, one of my primary statutory responsibilities is the printing and distribution of the statements. And so I needed to have uh, complete assurance of, uh, or probability of success. And I think this vendor represents that. Uh, to be successful, you have to be able to uh, interface with our tax software initially. Uh, and then of course you print but then you have to interface with UMB Bank at the lockbox end of it. So at the beginning, at the end, I needed to be very, very sure that they could accomplish that. And this particular vendor has demonstrated that they can uh, interface with CIC, which is our software, and they can interface with UMB Bank. They also have been used by the three of the top or the largest uh, counties in uh, the state of Kansas, Douglas, Johnson, and Sedgwick County. And it so happens that uh, Johnson County also uses the same UMB process that we do, so I have complete assurance that they can interface with UMB Bank. So given that potential for very high success, I've selected this particular uh, vendor. So I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Larry. I know that you've had discussion with IT as well. Um, how long, is this the first time that we've gone out for this type? As far as I know, we've always printed in-house. In -house. Uh, and that's worked very, very well for us. We've never had a failure, though uh, we have, you know, we have uh, issues to be sure that uh, we get the proper paper ordered in time, the uh, envelopes are ordered. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to coordinate all that, and uh, of course we have that potential that it if we have a, a single printer go down, uh, we're going to delay the, uh, the mailing of the statements. Pat uh, Oblander and his folks do a wonderful job for us. Uh, but I think they would like to get out of that. Uh, it's just kind of a side business for them. That's not what they do. They're not printers. They don't publish things. Uh, so they would like to move away from that. And, uh, while I'm very comfortable with him and I like the idea that he's in the, he's in the boat with me to make sure this is successful, <laughs> given the high potential that this, these folks have to be successful, then I'm willing to take that chance. And uh, just so happens because uh, we can do this consolidation and save on the mailing, then we have a potential to do, uh, you know, to have savings between two and, and ten thousand dollars of, of annual cost. That's that's significant, but it's not the driving force here. Thank you. Other questions? Commissioner Kirk? <coughs> Mr. Ma, and when we look at the cost savings part of it, presently the way that we are doing our tax statements, it, my understanding is your office provides the envelopes. Yes. And IT provides the paper, and then we have the postage through a uh, company, uh, American Presort, and so it's kind of three different parts. Yes, it is. And coordinating all those parts and the potential for that to get out of sync uh, is, is very high. It takes a lot of time, which uh, I don't include in, in my cost. If you look at our cost that I was able to gather versus the cost of this vendor, there's about two cents difference, two cents per statement. Mm -hmm. That represents less than $4,000 savings if I just take that savings. Mm -hmm. And I. I uh, suspect that's not a true savings because we don't incorporate all those uh, labor costs in. Now, is presently is the mailing cost paid out of our general fund or is that borne by a department? Actually, we split the cost in many ways. Uh, I, I uh, pay for the envelopes. 
Pat pays for the uh, ink and the paper, and then uh, we have a general fund that pays for the mailing. So that it comes in in three different, so that's hard to figure out exactly what it costs us to begin with. Uh, so now we'll hit one bill, uh, which should be paid out of the general fund, and we'll know exactly what those cost us and, and be able to evaluate. On an ongoing basis, I plan to uh, look at it from an RFP standpoint. But again, I, I'm still going to, uh, because it's so important, I'm going to put that criteria on. I have to have a pretty solid evidence that I'm going to be successful because it's not something I'm willing to gamble to save two or three thousand mm dollars. -hmm. That's not a gamble I'm willing to take uh, as the uh, person who's responsible statutorily to make sure this happens. Generally, we have a purchasing policy, and if it goes over a certain amount, we need to send out a request for proposals, and that would generally be our methodology, and this is departing from that. Uh, one of our exceptions is a sole source vendor, somebody who has expertise or knowledge, and I uh, you know Ms. Greiner can probably add, fill in the blanks, make sure I get all the words in the right order, but in your opinion, is this a person with expertise with the bank, with printing, with our tax software? that they would be able to hit all of those parameters? Yes, uh, I agree with all that. And uh, uh, once we gain some experience with using an outsource uh, for this, then I think we'll be in a better position to write an RFP and then make an evaluation. But initially, uh, I want to uh, fail safe, if I can use that term, and make sure that this is going to happen and we can get the savings, hopefully, and then we can be a lot smarter where we go in the future. It's something that I do not uh, take lightly, and it's not going to be just driven by cost. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that uh, just one comment. Betty Greiner, Director of Administrative Services. One thing that I need you to approve or vote on at the time is to waive the purchasing policy. Uh, we have discussed this and are, are in total agreement. I just <coughs> need that one little, right. little thing in, in your approval. That was going to be like my next question. <laughs> so thank you for answering that. Further questions or comments, commissioners? Did you have anything? Uh, the only thing, and, and uh, I'm glad we're looking into this. Uh, the only downside is we give up control, and we can't set this as a priority for our outsource uh, vendor. And uh, it sounds like you've considered that, and you're happy and, and comfortable with it, but. That is a concern. Uh, it, you is obviously a, know. it is a major concern to me, <coughs> and that's one of the reasons I've chosen this, uh, this vendor. I have uh, complete confidence in Johnson, Sedgwick, and Douglas County, and those treasurers, and they've, they've got years and years of experience with this particular vendor. So uh, I, I, I can believe what they tell me. And then knowing that they have interface with UMB Bank and with our software, that covers those bases for me and gives me that confidence that uh, we're doing the right thing. Larry, what's the, the terms of the contract? Is it, did you say one year or? No, we can what? we can actually cancel at any time. <coughs> uh, the cancellation clause in there says if we do uh, cancel, that they can bill us for the last three months' worth of billing, you know, average. But here's the caveat. We only use them twice a year. We use them in December and May. So there are only two months that we bill. So uh, to put it bluntly, if I were to cancel, I'd probably cancel in the month of September, and my billing for the last three months would have been zero. So I feel pretty confident about being able to cancel if we, we don't think they're performing. Thank you. Okay, yes. This may seem like, like a rather minor issue, but I noticed that our company that we're talking about is from Des Moines, Iowa. When the tax statements are mailed out, is it going to have a postmark of Iowa? Because I know that sometimes that even when we had statements that are being mailed from Kansas City we, or payments being sent to Kansas City, why are my tax statements being collected in Kansas City? Why are my tax statements coming from Iowa? Well, and I fully would expect to get that question. I'm still getting that question about why do I, my payments go to uh, uh, Kansas City. Uh, frankly, I only know of one other uh, vendor that can uh, print these, and that's in Wichita, that's in Kansas. And they are not a, uh, a company that prints. It's it's an online service. And I did experiment with that last uh, 
April. I sent 51 statements and through them it worked. Uh, but I had to send them the envelopes and go through all that process because of our specialized <coughs> envelopes. Uh, so I do know that I can get the file and I can send it. Actually, it came from my desk. I sat right at my desk and did it. Uh, and uh, <coughs> they matched with UNB Bank. But they don't do contracts. It's, it's one of those things where you do it online, you put your file up, and then you look at the price, and then you approve it, and it's gone. What I plan to do next, next year is to take that same file, <coughs> upload it, see what the cost would be, and compare it to the cost that I'm going to be taking with this vendor. So I'm kind of doing a price comparison, <coughs> uh, and then obviously I, I probably I will not approve it, but I will know whether or not I'm getting a good cost. I mean, while it does not cost any more to mail a letter from Iowa as it does from Topeka, people do take special notice and they look at the uh, stamps and they look at where it's postmarked from and I know that that's a question that will come up. So we sure. would anticipate that when yeah. you get your tax statements, you would see a postmark from Iowa. Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, probably it'll show bulk. Uh, if they're focused on the postmark, then um, uh, may take a little uh, uh, emphasis off what's inside. <laughs> that's the bill. <laughs> further questions? Or irritate people more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, yeah. That could be. Uh, but uh, that's, some, that's something I'll have to live with. Okay. I'll make a motion to waive the purchasing policies and approve the contract. Is there a second? Second. It's motion by Commissioner Bueller, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. I think you just, you approved the policy, is that, did you do it all in one? We, I, didn't I made a motion to waive the purchasing policies and approve the contract. Okay, yeah. thank you. All in one yeah. shot. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Item D, Sheriff's Office number one, consider approval of request to solicit bids for the purchase of 125 service handguns. Good morning, Commission. Uh, what you have before you is uh, just to make a request for uh, soliciting some bids on the purchase of the new weapons there. Actually, it's just a replacement of what we have. Our weapons that we have, our handgun, <coughs> excuse me, is, is just a, uh, a replacement there that once they start getting to the age, it's time to uh, recycle through and for go through those. And it just hit me, Herman Jones, Sheriff <laughs> Shawnee County. <laughs> so, and that's what we have right there. So it's just a request for there. We uh, uh, just replaced very similar to what we have right here. Uh, we also, when we make that request, we, we have a uh, contingent of type of weapons there. So we have uh, we have some eight, some officers that have larger hands, same caliber, but a weapon that will fit their hands as well as for small, and those type of things right there. Of course, also for those that, that would not actually work in uniform, but also work in undercover type. So it's a combination of those, but same caliber. Any questions? Thank you. And this is for the county councilor on the <coughs> approval of the request. Thank you. I, I guess I'm just confused as to why we are approving the request to solicit bids uh, for the sheriff who's an elected official who can go out and do that. I mean, he has the authority to do that without our approval. Is that correct? Uh, Rich Eckert, County Councilor. <coughs> yes, sir, that's correct. They, they don't even have to bid it if, if the sheriff doesn't want to. They could just go to a vendor and buy these. Um, so I, I guess I'd have to ask the sheriff. <coughs> a lot of it is just putting it out to the public so you people know. Those okay. type of things but we're really important. not approving this. Right. You're just considering okay. it. <coughs> okay. I just was confused. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. I appreciate the sheriff coming and talking to us about this. Uh, I mean, that that represents a partnership between that we're in the loop. We kind of know what the sheriff is doing and um, what he's, uh, how he's equipping his officers. And so I appreciate the sheriff coming here and talking to us today about this and uh, that he is going out for bid on these things. And so it does keep us in the loop, so to speak. I'll move to acknowledge the receipt of the request to solicit bids. Is there a second? Second. 
Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item D2, consider approval of request to solicit bids for the purchase of approximately 14 entry vests with ballistic carrier, ballistic accessories, and, accessories, and two ballistic plates for SWAT team members. Uh, what you have before you, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. What you have for me, uh, for you, is basically the same thing of what we're talking about when we were talking about the handguns, but this is uh, making a replacement <coughs> of our entry vest for our SWAT members there. Uh, basically, if you understand, vests have a uh, expiration, if you will, or a life expectancy, and uh, although uh, manufacturers say that they probably could go beyond that, but there's no guarantee, so they give it a life expectancy that and that's with five years, so we're looking to replace those along with some ballistic panels. Move to acknowledge receipt of the request. Motion by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. <coughs> Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item D3, acknowledge receipt of correspondence regarding the purchase of practice ammunition for handguns and rifles from Simmons Gun Specialties at specialty at a cost of $22,228 from the 2016 budgeted funds. Uh, as you know, as we have handguns, we also need ammo. And as we go through the process there, uh, in, the, in the past, we've been able to purchase so much that it got us to, a, you know, multiple years, and then we're coming up to a point where we're, we've completed that supply, and we need to replenish that. And uh, as uh, if you're not aware, this is on a state contract as well. Thank you. Question? I move to acknowledge. There's a motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item D4, consider authorization and execution of contract C278-2016 with net motion for annual maintenance of the software firewall used to create a firewall between the network and air cards at a cost of $4,506.66 from 2016 budgeted funds. Commissioner, what this is is really, a, as it says, a firewall or a safety net, if you will, for computers or uh, our officers that are out in the field and they have the computers in the cars, it also gives a se safety net between the computer in the car and also the county's network. So of that then, this is just renewing or having a uh, contract for that to make sure that that motion is uh, in place. Okay, thank you, Chair. Sure. Any questions? Move to approve the contract. So motion to approve the contract by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item D5, consider authorization and execution of contract C-279-2016 with Taser International as a sole source provider for the purchase of 10 tasers, extended warranties, and batteries at a cost of $28,256.49 from 2016 budget funds. Commissioners, what this is is just uh, not only just uh, of the adding on, it actually is adding on. We've added some new deputies over the recent time of uh, last year or so, and of that, then we need to supply for those individuals. Uh, we have uh, enough for those that are already existing for the agency, but the new deputies that are coming up on, this is what we need. Uh, so that's what we have. Okay. We'll move approval of the contract. Is there a second? I'll second, but sure. We added some new deputies <coughs> to talk about how we're doing with the recruitment and sure. how we're doing. Are, do we have new officers coming on? Right. Uh, do we have people in the pipeline and dispatch as well? Yeah, and, and I appreciate that. And obviously there was uh, maybe some misunderstanding about what we're doing right there. Uh, we're going full force with uh, some recruitment. Uh, we actually have a, a recruiter and several others that are working with that. And actually, the way I've advocated is every deputy and every person that works for our agency is a recruiter. Uh, and in that, for our deputies that we have right now, uh, as of last Friday, uh, myself and some of the command staff went down to uh, Hutchison to the Kansas Law Enforcement Training Center where we graduated three new deputies. Uh, and if you understand this, the way that it works for deputies or training of all law enforcement across the state is that they uh, overlap their classes. So uh, previous to this three that we uh, just graduated, there was one that graduated before that, so there was an overlap. One was there, three went down, and currently we have two going through the class, so within a couple more months or so, we'll have two more that will be graduating. Uh, uh, before the end of the year, I, I plan to fill three positions that are funded, 
All right, and at that point, we, uh, uh, we will be at our full staff of what we can fund right there. Obviously, we're, we're still shy of some individuals there, but we're working within our budget and those type of things. So I, I think that's the communication I wanted to have as far as those type of things, as, as well as what we have of purchases that we're making. Uh, we already have so much for the staff, for, the, uh, for salaries and those type of things, but for equipment, the equipment that you see right here is to staff <coughs> or to equip the individuals that are there now. Uh, and then, like, new vehicles that we're, we're looking at, we've got to replace, replace those vehicles. Obviously, some of the vehicles that we replace come back to the county, uh, go to various departments and those type of things right there. But uh, at the end of the year, when we look to it, that's when the new models come out. That's where we have to model, we have to make that uh, purchase that part of the year. And at the same time, when we buy any tires, different tires for different vehicles, and that's where it comes right there. So I think it might have been a little mis misunderstanding of how that came about. Uh, those type of things. So I just want to make sure uh, people are understanding. We're still staying within our budget, and these are things that are not exorbitant. We're not going out buying anything. These are things to equip our agency and our people for what we have in existence. And with dispatch, dispatch was one of our high priority needs. Yes. And we have a program with Washburn Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that going? That's going great. As uh, from talking to uh, Dean Coco out there, uh, when it started up this fall, we had uh, eight individuals which was probably twice as many as what they had planned for the first time of, of having a, a new program right there for a 911 communication. It's going great. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got eight individuals that are prospects to be employed with our agency or so. But even beyond that, with our recruitment that we've done right here, we have six in individuals that have been hired since July of this year. So we've got some already in the pipeline and those prospectives going right there. And we've got several positions that we've been looking forward to, to filling as well before the end of the year, if not into next year. So, so um, great <coughs> program, great training program. Uh, much consideration goes to uh, Washburn Tech. We're partnering with our agency and those type of things right there. And from the information I get, uh, it's very similar to not totally, but for what the forensic lab has out there to be on that campus, to have people coming into that program, and then also go into the field of law enforcement, and if not, stay right here in the state. And that's what we're looking for and shooting for right there. So I think it's very positive what we have right there. So. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Other questions? There is a motion and a second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item E, corrections number one, consider approval of request to purchase 26 800 megahertz radio to the cost of $46,816 from the 2016 operational budget. Good morning, Commissioner <coughs> Brian Cole, Shawnee County Department of Corrections. Back in June uh, of this year that the uh, Board of County Commissioners approved our agency to purchase 65 radios with the majority of that funding coming from two separate grants. Uh, and what we're now is when we're looking at our uh, uh, existing budget, Looking at our replacement of totally of, of uh, 200 over 250 radios, we've been working very closely with Betty Griner and Administrative Services regarding looking at our budget and looking at being able to maybe get ahead of the curve when it comes to these types of purchases, being able to help other agencies when it comes to the challenge. Well, I think we've all been identified as uh, with the uh, capital outlays, things like that. Uh, but we do have the funds available to purchase that this is the, uh, uh, we've been able to work with our vendor uh, to be able to get these radios that are saving almost maybe about $800 cheaper on the price. They were able to keep those pri uh, uh, existing <coughs> price with these radios. And these, you know, radios are how we communicate both inside the facility and with law enforcement partners and do emergency management, things like this. This is a mission critical uh, uh, purchase and uh, that is very, uh, a part, big part of our uh, strategic plan. And um, the cost of that is uh, <coughs> basically almost about 47 thousand dollars we do have the funds available for that purchase and again I did mention that we did go through Betty and we've been working with this with her. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Brian. Any questions for, for Brian Cole? No. No? I'll move approval of the request. Is there a second? Second, second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. None opposed motion carries three to zero. Item E2, consider authorization and execution of contract C280-116, amendment to the food service contract with Aramark, incorporating a 2.76% increase to provide adult inmate and juvenile resident meals. 
Good morning, uh, Brian Cole again, Shawnee County Department of Corrections. This is just our annual uh, uh, renewal of a contract with Airmark Food Services, a pride that provides all of our food services uh, to the inmate population. That uh, this is uh, the price increase is based off the CPI, Consumer Price Index mm -hmm. for food and groceries, things like that. And uh, again, this is just our annual uh, um, uh, renewal of this contract, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, and this Brian. was budgeted for. Uh, that's what I was going to say, and we did anticipate this increase, and yes. it was budgeted for 17 million. Yes. I'll move to approve, <coughs> Madam Chair, but Brian, can you talk to us just a minute how the addition to the jail, the kitchen, uh, with, we're up and running, how, how are we doing? Very well. The, uh, the new kitchen um, has become kind of a, a, a big hit with other correctional facilities, meaning <laughs> that it's a design that uh, we took a chance on and putting the... Uh, the office of the uh, food service staff in the middle to where they gave them 360 degree uh, uh, sight, line of sight to everything in the kitchen where before we had tremendous amount of blind spots where things could happen, maybe <coughs> inmates taking extra food or confiscating maybe yeast or something like that. Now we have a much better uh, design that is bigger, that will be uh, better for the future. Uh, the, the savings on the energy efficient uh, equipment, things like that, and also we shared our designs with other agencies, and now they're uh, wanting to come in and see our uh, facility uh, because they like the design. It has, done, it has, it has met our needs. Um, we've been very good. The efficiency's been very good, um, uh, and I, I just can't say enough about it. It's been very good. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Cook made a motion. Is there a second? I do have a question, okay. uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Brian, we've had uh, this contract with Aramark since October 1st, 2004. Yes. And this commission has always gone out for RFPs any type of contract. What's the status of this contract? This can, the next one it's up, we will be going out for bid. This contract was unusual, um, and we had talked to Betty regarding this as well, that when we were in entering into this contract, when we were uh, replacing uh, a great deal of equipment in the past, we entered into a contract that the, the uh, company would purchase the equipment if we extended the life of the contract. That contract, and that was where, that's why it had not gone out for bid. Um, but we are, when this is up, I, I apologize that I don't know when it is up, but I know it comes up pretty quick. <coughs> we will be putting this all out for bid. 2019. Okay, okay thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. I'll second the motion then. Um, any further discussion, all those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Item F, Parks and Recreation, number one. Consider <coughs> approval of request to solicit letters of interest for an independent contractor to operate the Topeka 10-man triathlon event. Good morning, Commissioner. Sean Osborne, Parks and Recreation. Um, <coughs> this is uh, just basically putting this out there to see if we have other interests in the, the event that we have at Lake Shawnee and seeing if there's other people that are wanting to take this on. Not that we've been disappointed with the group that we've had. It's just the right thing is getting that out there. To put it on paper. Very good. Questions or comments? On the approval of the request? Second. A second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries 3 to 0. Thank Thanks, Sean. Item G, Emergency Management Number 1, consider authorization and execution of contract C-281-2016 with Kansas Division of Emergency Management to hire a contractor <coughs> to provide training for specific realistic hazardous materials incidents at a cost to the county of $2,500, 20% match, and contract C-282-2016 with Kansas Division of, Division of Emergency Management to hire a co contractor for planning and execution of seminar, tabletop, function and full-scale exercises at a cost to the county of $15,000, 20% match. Mark Fisher, this is Dusty Nichols, Emergency Management. Uh, pretty straightforward. This is the follow-up to the uh, Hazardous Material Program grant we received earlier this year. Following the plan for that, uh, we uh, got the plan <coughs> finished. It should be coming over uh, for final signatures probably about two weeks. Uh, <coughs> this is to uh, exercise that plan, uh, the seminars, our type of exercise that we get credit for under the grant to uh, reflect on the EMPG grant as well. So these, these are kind of tied together to make everything work. But the seminars are specifically uh, to teach hazmat planners, uh, the LATC, Local Emergency Planning Committee, 
all those entities that have a vested interest in uh, hazardous materials uh, response. Uh, teach them that plan and then exercise the plan on tabletop uh, functional exercise. Thanks, Dusty. Any questions from the commission? I move for approval. So motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Item five, administrative communications. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Jeff Shabon, Kansas Central <coughs> Center. Uh, I want to tell you we had a great weekend with horses and hockey and dogs <laughs> at the game. It worked out very well. This week, same thing, hockey and horses. So we're continuing on. I'd like to introduce our new marketing person, Mrs. Allison Manning. She joined us started last week and very excited uh, to be here. So, any questions? Okay. Thank you. Welcome, Allison. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other administrative communications? I want to remind everyone that we are on uh, the 5th of October. Of course, it still says September. The 5th of October, we will be having a uh, flu clinic, a flu shot clinic here in the commission chambers from 10 to 2. Um, the uh, Department of Corrections had theirs on the uh, 21st, I think it was, uh, a couple weeks ago over at their facility. And this is open to all of county employees and court employees and their spouses and any children eight years old or older. And they just have to bring, you know, I've, they've received notification from me, but they have a tendency to see my name and they just delete it. To get their flu shot, it's very important. It's part of our, you know, the overall benefit to everyone uh, here at the county. So everyone line up between 10 and 2 on Wednesday here at the Commission Chambers and we'll have you your flu shot. Great. And it will cost them nothing. Uh, okay. Either the county or the state insurance. Okay. They are covered. Great. Thank you. Brian Cole, Department of Corrections. Uh, I just, I think I'd be remiss after. Uh, Commissioner Cook had mentioned something to the sheriff regarding hiring, that on Friday we had our basic officer academy that we were uh, uh, successfully uh, excited about. I guess, I guess that's the right word to say it. But uh, we uh, had um, graduation that we had approximately, I believe, uh, about 15 officers that were uh, went through our academy. They are already part of our count. Uh, as soon as we're done here, we uh, go back and meet seven new hires, six new hires uh, to the Department of Corrections. So we are moving ahead in that direction as well doing very well, and uh, so I just wanted to make sure that you know, this was a good time for Shawnee County Department of Corrections how as well. Many, how many open positions still available? I believe we have uh, low 20s. We've started okay. out close to about 35. So we've had, I think it was, uh, was it last week, Eve? Or it? Last week we, we had seven that were part of that account mm -hmm. that we did. This week we have another seven. We have, I talked to our training staff, we have approximately 10 people going through the process, and so we're hoping through backgrounds, polygraphs, and our hiring system that um, and processes that those are all successful and we can get them hired on. And so things are going well. And we're not leaving anything unturned when it comes to marketing and you know, we're doing it. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Brian, this officer academy, how long does it take? Is it something that's mandatory? What is it? No. Well, our officer academy, it's, uh, it is not uh, mandatory. Uh, that uh, unlike most jails, uh, uh, we're not run by a sheriff's office. Uh, we're um, our own agency, and we're one of a uh, few, if not the only uh, jail that runs its own uh, <coughs> Department of Corrections Academy. It's a two-week academy that goes with uh, numerous classes from uh, self-defense, communication skills, report writing, the court process, the correction system, uh, you name it. We go through a tremendous amount of professionalism, ethics, uh, uh, classes. We go through a great deal of classes. Um, we are currently working with Washburn University on looking at our academy, maybe to move it out to the new uh, KBI facility and uh, looking at uh, a process of trying to credentialize or maybe certify somehow the Corrections Academy and maybe be a first in Kansas or in this area to have a certified corrections program through an academy, things like that. So we're moving ahead trying to professionalize that as well. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lengthy time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, Commissioner. Dusty Nichols again. Uh, just wanted to um, kind of 
bring the attention that tomorrow that the weather is supposed to be a little um, severe, potentially. Uh, and just want to relate that to the past couple of weeks. We've had some flooding and some other issues. Um, when we were trying to gather the data throughout the county on the kinds of damages we have, uh, we very seldom get anything reported to us, um, speci specifically with county equipment and my equipment. So I'm urging uh, all county departments, everyone else that has a, a potential for uh, FEMA funding afterwards in the declaration to get those damages to us, photographs, uh, that type of damage as well. FEMA is changing the way they um, ask for the report and get to getting those money when they do when they do declare a disaster uh, in a region, so we can get some of that information back up to them and maybe part of that reimbursement. Uh, that hasn't been the case in the past few storms, but uh, part of that could be that we reported that. So um, I'm urging uh, when we ask for those reports, please send them up to us. Thank you, Dusty. Yes, sir. Dusty, did you just have an exercise or open house over the weekend? We did. National Weather Service had an open house. It's fantastic. Uh, they, uh, they hadn't done anything like that in about 20 years. Uh, they had uh, a lot of partners there, K-State, because um, the flood guys were there, the 190th um, weather flight was there, so they had quite a few um, partners there as well. And it was, it was pretty neat. They haven't done it again for 20 years, and so the, the advancements in 20 years were um, pretty interesting to see. And then they set off weather balloons, and uh, it was pretty neat. And they did it smart. They, um, they sold tickets, or uh, I shouldn't say sold, but they offered tickets. <coughs> about 500, and so they scheduled their tour, so it was uh, all day, a uh, nice flow of people coming in and out. And, uh, we had to talk to a lot of people, and uh, then it was, it, was, it was a good time. Very good. Okay. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Anyone else for administrative communications? Commissioners? Uh, Apple Festival is at Ward Mead on Sunday. It was a great time, and great to see everybody out for that. I have a few items, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, <coughs> it, it was a good weekend. Uh, several things happened. Uh, Washburn Rural Football Team won a big victory. Uh, Indian Hills Elementary School had a pancake breakfast Saturday morning, which was very well attended. Uh, the Apple Festival, as Commissioner Cook mentioned, was well attended, and uh, the U.S. team won the Ryder Cup. <laughs> exciting. Uh, the the other thing, I got a letter from a constituent, and I'd like to read it, uh, or at least parts of it. It uh, it was from Bob and Joan Par uh, Porter at uh, 33rd Street, and it says, we're writing to let you know of the assistance we received from Gary Rodekamp, a county employee. We live on a well-trafficked section of Southwest 33rd Street. On Monday, September 19th, we spoke with Gary Rodekamp. He works with county roads, mowing, site visibility, etc. He was very helpful on the phone, and later in the day, he came to our property. Knowing that many calls come into the Shawnee County offices, we questioned whether our concerns would go any further than our phone call. We appreciate the personal attention we received. We want to thank Mr. Rodekamp and let you know how professionally and promptly he handled this issue for us and for the county. Thank you, Madam Chair. Very good. Um, I, don't, I don't have anything to add uh, other than next Thursday, just a reminder that we will not be in session. Uh, we will be on the inner city trip uh, chamber and go to Topeka. So just for the department heads as you're scheduling items. Um, next item, please. Item six, executive session. Is there a need? There is not a need, so we are